In today's video, we're going to take a look back to 10 years ago at the 2008 NHL Entry Draft. We're going to take a look at how these guys have performed so far in their careers and do a redraft of the top 10 players. And that's coming up next. Welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams. So if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. But as I mentioned off the top, today we're gonna go back in time to 2008, take a look at the NHL entry draft, review who the top 10 picks were, and we're gonna do a redraft on who I think would be the top 10 picks if we could go back and redo that draft. I thought this would be a fun exercise to take a look at, especially with the 2018 entry draft coming up and a lot of big name defensemen that are supposed to be available in this draft. As much as it was supposed to be a deep draft, the first round is loaded with a lot of defensive prospects. And that reminded me a lot of this 2008 draft, which was also loaded with a lot of top defensemen who went on so far to have really good careers. But obviously, if we look back at the first round and these teams had a chance to do a do-over, I think some of these picks will go down a lot differently. Now, before we take a look at the top 10, I want to take a look at some a couple other notable names who were drafted in this draft, but if I would have went through the whole first round, likely would have made it as a first round pick uh, instead of where they ended up being drafted. But for the sake of time, I decided just to do a top 10 for today. Uh, but here are some other names to keep in mind that were drafted in this draft as well. So for example, the number 34 pick was goalie Jake Allen of the St. Louis Blues. Uh, the number 43 pick was Justin Schultz. At that time, he was drafted by the Ducks. Of course, now he's with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, we had Zach Smith of the Ottawa Senators, who's had a pretty long career so far. He was drafted number 79. Uh, number 82 pick was Adam Henrique, a uh, longtime New Jersey Devil, now playing with the Ducks. TJ Brody was number 114, obviously a pretty good defenseman with the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, Gus Nyquist, Detroit Red Wings, was taken number 121. Obviously, the Red Wings are well known for their late round picks here over the years. Number 157 was a great pickup for the Blue Jackets was Cam Atkinson. And the number 156 pick was Jared Spurgeon. So obviously, a lot of these guys were late round picks and they have had pretty good careers. Uh, if I went deeper into the first round, they very well could get up into the first or second rounds. A lot of these guys definitely would have been higher, much higher than what they were, but weren't quite high enough to get into my top 10 that we're going to take a look at here. Now, we're also going to take a quick second and take a look at some of these top first round busts of this draft because, you know, every draft that comes with a lot of hype and not everybody lives up to it, unfortunately. So there always is some draft bust that comes pretty well out of every year. So let's take a look at a couple of them. A couple of these guys were first round picks. Like for example, uh, Zach Bogosian was the number three pick. I would definitely call him a, a first round bust. And for him, it's more, I think injuries have really hampered his abilities uh, more than anything else. So I think it's more injury related in his case. But if you take a look at like Luke Shen, Nikita Filatov, some of these other guys went pretty high in the draft as you're gonna see we talk about here and certainly would fall into that draft bust category. But without further ado, Let's jump into our top 10. What I plan to do here with each pick, I'll tell you what team held the selection, the original player that was taken in that spot, and what player I would put there now. So the number 10 pick in the draft originally belonged to the Vancouver Canucks. They drafted Cody Hodgson, who had a pretty good looking, promising uh, junior career, but only ended up playing 328 games in the NHL between the Canucks and the Sabres. Uh, the number 10 pick that I would put there now would be Derek Stepan, obviously originally drafted by the Rangers. But he's gone on to play so far 584 games and has over 400 points and certainly would be a top 10 pick if this draft were to be able to redone. So can you imagine if the Canucks could have grabbed Step on there instead of Hodgson? Certainly would have changed their fortunes there a bit for sure. The number 9 pick belonged to the New York Islanders. They originally drafted Josh Bailey, number 9, who's had a pretty solid career, uh, 371 points. Now, actually, in this draft, you'll see here, I actually moved Bailey up on the ranks here a little bit. So they would have actually ended up with a different player. And it actually worked out kind of funny the way I did it here. The number nine pick that I would have moved up would be Jordan Everly. Jordan Everly was originally drafted by the Oilers at number 22. Has 400, over 400 points as well uh, in 575 games. Now plays for the Islanders anyhow. But I, I moved Bailey up. I think Bailey's been a little bit more consistent in his career. Uh, so I had him ranked a little bit higher here, and we moved Everly into the number nine spot. The number eight pick belonged at that point. They were still called the Phoenix Coyotes. Uh, the Phoenix Coyotes selected Michael Bodker, who's played over 600 NHL games and 281 points. 
Obviously not too shabby, um, but at this point wouldn't be a top 10 pick. Uh, but he certainly probably still could have gone in the first or second round. Um, he's had a decent career. Uh, at that point, though, the, I would have moved up. Uh, now, we don't see a lot of goaltenders go high in the draft, but in this case, I would have done it if had we have known that he was going to be this good. But I would have moved up Braden Holtby, who was taken by the Capitals at number 93 in this draft. Can you imagine if the Coyotes could have got Holtby? That would have changed the fortunes of that franchise substantially. If he was a starting goalie for the Coyotes instead of the Capitals for the last number of years, that's a big time difference maker right there. The number seven pick belonged to the Nashville Predators. They selected Colin Wilson, who has over 550 games to his name, along with 250 points. He's been a pretty solid, decent NHLer. Uh, but obviously at this point, if we could do a redraft, he certainly would have dropped down on the rankings for sure. Uh, and I had them taking Josh Bailey, who went number nine to the New York Islanders. As I mentioned, uh, just shy of 400 points in his career, played over 700 games, been a very, very solid NHLer for a long time now. Number six belonged to the Columbus Blue Jackets. They originally selected Nikita Filatov, who was a big time flop. He did not play well and ended up going back to Russia. Uh, he played very limited number of games with the Blue Jackets, had a short stint with the Ottawa Senators, and then went back and has played in Russia for the remainder of his career. Uh, obviously, Filatov never worked out for them. Instead, they could have taken John Carlson, the soon to be unrestricted free agent uh, defenseman, who was originally drafted by the Capitals at number 27 who has over 320 points and just shy of 600 games. So imagine John Carlson uh, going to Columbus instead of uh, Filatov. That would have been a big game changer as well. Number five pick belonged to the Toronto Maple Leafs where they selected Luke Shen. Obviously Luke Shen has been a pretty serviceable defenseman throughout his career, but I think it's safe to say that he would not go number five if we had a chance to do a do over here. Um, he has 140 points and just shy of 700 games. So like I said, he's been a pretty decent, serviceable NHL defenseman. Certainly still would have probably went in the first couple of rounds for sure. But they could have had Roman Yossi, who I'd put at number five. Roman Yossi's had almost 300 points and over 468 games in his career. Uh, obviously now a captain for the Predators. Uh, tremendous leadership skills, tremendous minute muncher on the blue line. Uh, all kinds of other skills there that are very important. You imagine if the Leafs had Roman Yossi on the blue line for the last number of years. That would have been a game changer for them. The number four pick I actually left alone. The St. Louis Blues selected defenseman Alex Petrangelo, who's become their captain, a very big part of their team, over almost 350 points in 600 games. He's had a pretty solid career. I don't think we can say too much. That was a solid pick, and that one I would have left alone. I'd leave him at number four. The number three pick belonged to the Atlanta Thrashers franchise, which is now the Winnipeg Jets. That pick was originally Zach Bogosian, who I mentioned was a first-round bust, mainly because of injuries. He has played, though, in over 500 games and has 170 points. So not too bad, but certainly would have moved him down the list for sure if we were doing a do-over here. Uh, now I'd put in that spot Drew Doughty, uh, who's had an awesome career with over 400 points and over 750 games played. So obviously Drew Doughty was originally the number two pick. I did move him down one spot, and this was the, the hardest part about this, and I think you could, they're pretty well interchangeable. Uh, you'll see here in a second when I put number two, and you can let the argument begin in the comment section. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be probably pretty decent split here on who thinks uh, Doughty should be number two versus this other player, uh, which you'll figure out here momentarily. Um, and a lot of these guys get compared to each other quite a bit, and for a lot of people it's a coin toss on who's better. But uh, as much as I do love Drew Doughty, I'm a big Drew Doughty fan, but I'd have him at number three. The number two pick belonged to the LA Kings, and it was Drew Doughty. And instead, I'd put Eric Carlson in that spot, who has had over 500 points in his career in 620 games. Um, you know, obviously, him and Drew Doughty get compared to each other a lot. You could argue one's better than the other. You could probably say Doughty's defensive game is a little stronger. But when we're talking, I think Carlson's just a little bit more of a difference maker, in my opinion. He's had over 100 extra points in uh, quite a bit uh, fewer games as well. So I think the, the offense, for me, if you're going to build a team around them, you could really either guy would be an awesome starting point. But for me, I'd go with Carlson. But uh, Drew Doughty is not a bad second choice at all. But really, I think that one's a coin toss. You could probably go either way. So certainly leave some comments on that one. I'm sure that'll probably be the biggest debate here. Now, the number one pick belonged to the Tampa Bay Lightning, and they took Steven Stamkos. I would not change a thing about Stamkos going first overall. He has over 664 points and 656 games played, so he's basically a point-per-game player. He's had tremendous goal scoring throughout his career and has done awesome things for the Tampa Bay Lightning. He's their captain, uh, you know, and he's everything to that franchise. So, by all means, I'd leave him at number one. 
So certainly leave some comments down below. If you were doing these picks in this top 10, who would you have in your top 10? Do you agree or disagree with any of my picks? Feel free to, to agree or disagree. Leave your comments down below and we can continue this conversation further. If you're new to the channel, I hope you consider subscribing. We have uploads here every day, all kinds of content to meet all your hockey needs. We're also on social media, and if you haven't had a chance to check that out, please do so. You're going to see our Twitter handle on the screen right here. We're also on Facebook and Instagram, and all those links are down below in the description. As always, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We'll catch you next time.